This is only have to wake up in like five hours. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Okay. You've heard of that before. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week on the Rail Splitter, we are going to talk about Ken Burns. Two great gentlemen are dedicated to a proposition. In to each other. Party on, dudes! Welcome to the Rail Splitter, the Abraham Lincoln podcast. I am your co-host Jeremy. With me is Rail Splitter Nick. Hello, Lincoln fans. <laughs> and Rail Splitter Mary. How are you, Mary? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys doing? Uh, you know, great. <laughs> All these technology issues becoming a weekly update. We're working very hard at trying to create a product that sounds good. Um, I'll admit that we spend a lot more time on content that we do on the sound, but if you can't hear us, it really doesn't matter. So we're trying to do our best. Hopefully we sound okay. Uh, we're actually recording this live on YouTube. We currently have zero viewers, which is totally fine. <laughs> it's the first time we're trying it and we didn't announce it. And it is uh, 10, 15 central time on a Wednesday night. So 11, 15 Canadian time. Yep. <laughs> Canadian time. Nation of Canada. Yeah. So I didn't think it worked that way. I I think it does. So uh, we are going to talk about Ken Burns. Uh, He is obviously a documentarian, a revolutionary documentarian, I think you could say. Uh, The reason we wanted to talk about Ken Burns this week, there are actually two reasons. Uh, Hoping that he's listening. One is hoping that he's listening. (laughs) Um, he's very busy this week, though, because on PBS, uh, starting on Sunday, September 17th, his newest series entitled The Vietnam War premieres. Uh, and that is very exciting for us. Uh, Ken Burns, I think, will always have a special place in the hearts of Lincoln fans and Civil War fans. Um, certainly those of us who are around our age, uh, I'm 37. So like I was in a very important kind of formative time of my life when that civil war series came out. Um, so he's always been special for me. Uh, so I'm excited for the Vietnam war, uh, documentary for many reasons. Um, but, uh, the fact that I'm just a fan of his is definitely one of them. Um, and another reason we wanted to talk about uh, Ken Burns today is because Nick and I, uh, had the opportunity to see him speak last week. So uh, this episode, we're actually going to turn it over to Mary to kind of do the hosting gig a little bit um, because we didn't want to just rub it in her face that we would <laughs> Ken Burns speak not because she lives in a different country, um, but because that way it kind of, kind of work a little bit better because she's probably similar to some of our listeners and that they weren't there may want to know a little bit about what that was like. We were like a mile away from them. <laughs> not have great seats. We were in the which was kind of cool because uh, it was he, him and uh, Lynn Novick, who's his collaborator and co-director. Um, but it was cool because it was at the Auditorium Theater in downtown Chicago, which is a very big theater, um, and it was sold out. So there were, I mean, probably, I guess we could probably look up the capacity of the theater, but there were definitely thousands of people there uh, just to see a documentarian speak, which is And I believe cool. Abraham Lincoln saw the Mighty Python Holy Grail there. What? I'm like, my record on that. No. no, I think I'm wrong on that one. <laughs> That's a great movie, though. I bet Lincoln would have liked that movie. I think he would have appreciated it. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you Mary. Yeah. I think I'm he would have. That was the theater joke we decided to go with because it could have been much worse, but that one's. <laughs> I, I wasn't even thinking that, that route. Now you've just taken it down to a demented place. Right. <laughs> That's what happens when you do the second podcast of the night. Yeah. Yeah. We recorded next week's episode before this week's. Um, so next week's episode, you'll hear me say, man, we haven't recorded in a while, which it could be like true, but we're kind, of, we're kind of like going back in time, or weirdly back in time. This is episode 14. It's going to air on September. No, this is 15. 15. You're right. It is 15. It's going to air on the 14th or, or drop on the 14th. Tomorrow. Which is tomorrow for the zero You're going to be listening people. to this today, but it's really tomorrow for us. Unless you listen to it like we 
later in a week. Yes. <laughs> then then you're just probably turning it off right now. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. So Mary, we said we we're gonna turn over hosting duties okay. and we just started jacking around. So <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry host, about it. Host away. <laughs> okay, so as a Canadian, um, I'm especially looking forward to Ken Burns's Vietnam documentary because we don't really learn about the Vietnam War here. Um, when I went to Washington, D.C., when I was 17, I saw the memorial. When I was in Washington, D.C. this past June with my best friend, um, I learned a little bit more about the Vietnam War, and I have to say I'm very interested in it. Um, as Jeremy said, he and Nick got to see Ken Burns speak, which for anybody who's into the Civil War, like, that's just, I, I mean, I would love to see him speak. And we've you know, we're all familiar, I think most of us who study the Civil War with the, the Ken Burns documentary and the hauntingly beautiful melody of A Shok and Farewell that plays so much throughout it. Um, but as Jeremy said, he's got a new documentary premiering on Sunday on PBS. So um, I'm just wondering, okay, my first question is, what was it like to see Ken Burns speak? And you're gonna make me tear up because that song makes me cry. <laughs> Sorry, that was not a That's okay. <laughs> I won't cry, I promise. I was going to play that at the top and I forgot. And then you That's it. okay. So, anyway, what was it like, Nick? Well, this is not a good soundtrack for what it was like because it was actually <laughs> fun. But. Well, we, we sat in our seats. <laughs> they were very high. Uh, no, it was awesome. So, um, you know, we got to see about an hour, um, one hour's worth of the 18 hour series of clips. Um, so he kind of broke it down into several clips from several different episodes. I believe it's 10 episodes long. I think it's 10 episodes long, 10 episodes. 18 hours total. Yeah. So, and I thought he did a nice job picking uh, clips that kind of tell the whole story from the beginning um, to, you know, kind of the middle of the war to um, they interviewed a lot of people from um, North Vietnam. Uh, the NVA, as well as the Viet Cong, as well as um, civilians in South Vietnam. We heard some of their stories, um, as well as some of the U.S. soldier stories. So pre-Tet and post-Tet Offensive, that's kind of the dividing mark, um, I think, a lot of times when it comes to combat as far as winding up and then winding it down. Right. So um, it, it was cool. Then he came out and talked. Him and Lynn um, kind of talked, took some Q&A. Um, and they kind of broke down kind of their how they go about tackling, you know, a topic so large like this. And luckily for them, it wasn't their first time. They've done this with Civil War. I guess Lynn came in at the very end, but she was right there with Ken um, for World War II. Um, so I found that very interesting, too, considering um, at school we interview a lot of the veterans and kind of, you know, turn mm -hmm. that stuff in documentary. So I was fascinated to hear what he had to say about that. Yeah, um, and I had a similar experience. Uh, the beginning of the program, I guess it was, um, the local PBS people kind of introduced Ken Burns, and he came out by himself and gave, oh, maybe like a 10 or 12-minute speech, um, kind of talking about the project. And, you know, he, he was really funny. He was talking about, you know, he's like, we've worked on it. They've literally worked on it for 10 years. And he says, you know, we worked on on this for all of 10 years and it's an 18 hour work over 10 episodes. And we come to these places and they immediately ask for clips. So he's like, you know, it's kind of funny the way he, the way he kind of set it, set it up. Like, you know, people want to see five or 10 minute snippets and, you know, and his, you know, it's really an 18 hour work that, you know, I think he intends it to be taken as a whole. And I think it probably should be. However, it's um, a pain in the ass getting clips sometimes when you have a huge project because we've run into that with our vet project. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, yeah, we want a five minute clip. And then you got to find five minutes from a 30 minute. Thing. I mean, we're only dealing with 30 minutes. Right. He's got 18 hours yet to get an hour worth of clips. So. Wow. Right. So um, and just to kind of give the uh, listeners uh, a little bit of background. Uh, Nick works on the Harlem Veteran Project, which uh, records uh, and makes documentaries on veterans experiences as a project we worked on together uh for three years, three years two and a half uh, three i think um and then i switched positions at the school and now uh nick does it uh with um a colleague colleague partner in life Nick's life Girl partner friend. gal <laughs> gal pal yeah she's a great a, noonie yeah so um anyway but uh so when we started the project you know ken burns was very much 
present, I think, in our fledgling documentary experience, trying to kind of create it with no training whatsoever. And we really just tried to, to recreate what he does, essentially, except our work was always with like one individual veteran to try to like you know, create a mini biography. And then they could, right? obviously you talk better about it now for what the project currently is, but it's very similar. Yeah, last few years, we've shown uh, parts of the war in class when studying documentary filmmaking. For yeah. sure. Yeah, we started with World War II, and then we you moved on. And to now we Korea. are doing a lot of Vietnam veterans. So, mm -hmm. so but very, very, very heavily influenced by Ken Burns. For sure. Wow, it would have been amazing to see him. Um, so, obviously, this documentary is go probably going to follow along the same lines as the Civil War documentary, the way you know, how he does this thing with the, the, with the photographs, how he pans in on them if he's talking about a certain individual. Um, now, I know Vietnam is in much more recent memory for Americans than the Civil War. So with that in mind, do you guys think that, like, it could be controversial at all? Like, was there any hint of that when, like, at Ken Burns' talk? Yes. Um, he addressed that specifically. And there are really two points to your question. One he talked about how much he learned and how much he didn't know. And he lived through the Vietnam War. He was, he was a kid. He was, I think, you know, over 13, like the, you know, the late 60s, uh, when it really heated up. Um, but he talked about how much he learned and how little we know. And I'll admit, I'm a, I was a former history teacher, and I really don't know a whole lot about the Vietnam War. Um, certainly about, you know, the, the perception of, of what it was – um, has kind of changed over time and um, but he definitely talks about the controversy and at the end of the presentation it was very moving he asked for all of the Vietnam veterans to stand so we were able to give them a round of applause which was which was nice to be able to do wow then he asked for everyone who actively protested the war to also stand and then they also got a round of applause wow. and, you know his point was kind of that you know they both of those groups had a very significant place in history. Um, and he was very, very deliberate in honoring both of them simultaneously, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. And another point he brought up, another thing I've noticed in his, uh, all his war series is he talked about how he didn't per they made a conscious choice not to interview major players, um, who are a lot, who might still be alive that were directly involved in it who kind of are these polarizing figures, like a Henry Kissinger. They purposely didn't interview him. So they're taking kind of um, people that we don't know and getting their stories so we don't already have this kind of biased context when we hear them talking. And I think that's one avenue. And that's what I love about um, the way he – he always does a nice job finding these characters that aren't in the history books that we don't know mm -hmm. and uses them really to drive the story and then uses the famous people as supplemental – to them so i think he does that purposely to avoid some of that controversy yeah. but i mean when you're talking about vietnam i mean i hear it with the vets they're all over the place i mean some vets are total pro, pro war we should have done more some vets are totally um we should have never been there so to completely create an 18 hour series that is not gonna be um that's not gonna you know um bring out some type of controversy i don't want to say controversy but you know some type of disagreement from somebody mm -hmm virtually impossible yeah and uh, you know and that's why i mean ken burns essentially invented that medium like the long form extremely long form yeah form. you know that's that's very much his um his creation i guess for lack of a better term so he's gonna show as many perspectives as he can mm -hmm. he did mention that some of those big figures are in it are, in, are gonna be in the work but i they're not like featured so like you mentioned john mccain john Kerry, kissinger um, uh, Jane Fonda. He made so, like, it sound like it was clips more, not them sitting down talking. It came across like they're clips of them. Yeah, I don't and know. I'll be interested to see. It. Yeah, it. it'll be interested to see because I, I mean, he very much wanted to avoid. Because like, I'll be honest, I really want to hear John McCain's story. I really want to hear John mm -hmm. McCain's story. Jane uh, Fonda. Uh, Jane Fonda. Yeah, like, dude. Sometimes so. you ask the best about Jane Fonda. One guy <laughs> told me, like, literally. They mentioned he was at the doctor's office getting like his blood pressure medicine measured, and they said Jane Fonda and it like skyrocket. Really? Like to the <laughs> point where like, we used to have it on our question list, and then I just decided to take it off because some people would just be like, 
crazy, man. It was nuts. A lot, well, a lot of veterans not a fan of Jane Fonda. Well, I read one article about him today, um, just about the Vietnam documentary, and it kind of goes back to what you guys are saying about, you know, the veterans, ha they stand up, and then the war protesters stand up because they each had a role to play in the war. And um, I can't remember the exact quote that Ken Burns said, but he said that with Vietnam, and I'm sure it was the case when he was doing the Civil War too, there's so many different truths to the war, and that's why it is... It, you know, it's a tough subject to tackle, but I think it's amazing he's tackling it because it's something that, well, like I said, I'm looking forward to watching it as a Canadian and learning more about it. Um, and I'm sure I know you both are looking forward to it as well. Yeah, another so, aspect too, he covers, from the clips that we saw where it was the NVA guys talking, um, I believe that one NVA soldier, am I right on that? Yeah. Opposed to Vietcon. I, I think that stuff's going to be powerfully powerful to hear too, from their perspective and how they felt about it. Um, and I think the one quote, this isn't really spoiling, but, um, you know, the one guy said, you know, nobody won Vietnam. And we've talked mm -hmm. to a gentleman who was from Vietnam. We had the privilege of, I had a former student in the class um, who's from Vietnam, and his dad, like, verbatim said the same quote. And, and I think that's true. I don't think there was any winners or losers. Or, I don't think there's any winners in the Vietnam War. Yeah, and Ken, well, Ken Burns used the term yeah. there was a failure. He basically mm -hmm. said there there was a clear objective to the war, and they, we, whoever you want to say, did not achieve that objective. Hence, it was a military failure. Um, yeah, and I'm talking which, from a military failure. Right, standpoint. no, yeah. I'm not saying, right. of course, the soldiers, you know, soldiers go and fight, and they're not the ones making these decisions. Right. Either. And then, well, the, and from the clips that we saw, the, the thing, one of the, the things that I had literally never read about, heard about, at least not directly, was the perspective of the, quote, other side. Um, and there's some really, really moving narratives about returning home to completely destroyed families. There's narratives from people on the home front having no idea who was alive and who wasn't. Like, they, they were... There was an they were extremely organized fighting force but the logistics behind it like they did not inform anybody of who was living and who was dying and this is north vietnam this is north vietnam right yeah, yeah. um so and the 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 one thing that stood out to me was ken burns the way he spoke about them there was so much respect for their perspective and so much respect for their experience um and they're really a vital piece to the story um, that I think is going to really make it um, a worthwhile experience. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's 18 hours for one documentary is a long time. You know? Yeah. I, I'm still chewing on the war, uh, which was his last major yeah. in World War II. Like, I'm still digesting that one and trying to kind of work through it. Um, and the Civil War, you know, I, I watch that every two, two or three years or mm -hmm. so. Um, and there's still things from that that, that I kind of jump out. And, yeah. So, um, yeah, but I, his respect and inclusion of the quote unquote other side, I think, is really, really going to be mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. all you could do is try to get voices from all sides uh, in America and then as well as uh, as far as North Vietnamese and Viet Cong. Pay them all respect, do the best you can putting it together, be as, as accurate as you possibly can, which they talked about that process. They talked about screening scenes with literally a room full of scholars from all over the place and then even paying as much detail to one word which it did what did he talk about like one of their final edits they decided to change one single word because they felt like that was the proper way to do it the historically accurate way to do it so i think he's done everything in his power to make it as uncontroversial as possible mm -hmm. and as fair and balanced as yeah a human can in an 18 hour series right. that said there's going to be a lot of controversy so that's yeah. Kind, yeah. Of, kind of the point so. yeah and, you know anytime like i mean i've always been into american history and anytime i encountered vietnam it, it always seemed to be encountered with controversy and that's you know the feeling that i got when i was in washington dc this past june and i saw you know some exhibits about it i obviously went to the memorial i visited every time I'm in DC, it's actually, even though I don't know much about the war, it's a very moving spot for me to go to. 
Um, and you guys both sort of touched on this all, already, but my final question for you about it is like, what was your favorite part of seeing him speak? Um, uh, there was, I mean, I'll be honest, there's a little bit of starstruck, you know, like seeing him. Yeah. Somebody who I've admired <laughs> since I was like 10. Yeah. You know, th that, I mean, that was kind of cool. I mean, you know, um, the Q and A part wasn't great, but I, I, you know, anytime you do something with a large group of people that are there, that are in one place for a common purpose, you feel an energy. And, um, when he was talking about, um, being funded through the public broadcasting service and working really for the people in that sense and talking about his role as a documentarian to present the truth. Um, and he talked about the first amendment and he talked about what that meant. And he talked about what he was trying to do to, to show the, the, what the war was and what the war is. And, um, I thought that was really cool because he, you know, touched, touched some nerves on some current events stuff that are going on. Um, and he had some very interesting things to say about narrative and history and how, how, is, how history is recorded, how it's remembered. Um, and, um, I think that there's a lot of, lot of stuff to that. So I thought that was pretty, some pretty deep stuff. He was a hundred percent focused and, and the topic was a hundred percent the, this current work. Mm -hmm. Um, so he didn't talk I mean, he mentioned indirectly the civil war and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of, I wish he would have gone into a little bit more on like his evolution as a filmmaker. Yeah. Um, because like I've seen that, um, there's a, there's a specific, element um because i think just technology wise how far he's come since the civil war but also mm -hmm. how far his narrative has come since the civil war um i think one common thread that we see from the civil war through the war his work on world war ii through vietnam were the the two narratives in the civil war um from was it sam watkins and elijah hunt Rhodes. Mm -hmm. they're, like, they're diarists right but they so yeah. they were involved in almost every major conflict between the two of them they were like the central characters or, or, or two of the central characters in the civil war and that's really all he had to go with like there wasn't a lot of other yeah like that and i think the war and that's certainly the vietnam war the new piece is really going to be like the, that times a thousand like there's so mm -hmm. many narratives of people like those two um so i think he's always wanted to kind of do that a common person's experience yeah. of the war um and now he's really able to mm -hmm. yeah i agree um i like the q a whenever you get inside the head of the filmmaker i always kind of like that it gives me new ideas and stuff to use in the classroom so i thought a lot of that was fascinating kind of his approach to collecting stuff and kind of hit this project so to me the q a i would have preferred more q a because i'm going to see the clips anyways uh, I wish it was all a and a to be honest, but right. I, obviously I, that's not why the majority of people were there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The clips were kind of <laughs> cool to see. I'm yeah. Gonna, like, I'm going to see those clips. Um, and we were, I mean, it was like a, I don't even know, 2000, 3000 person theater. And we were like five rows from the back in the second balcony. So like, it wasn't a really great place to see a film. Yeah. Um, and but then again, like we went to we went to grab we were getting a cup of coffee because Nick and I spent the day in the city because we were yeah. in work. So we went to grab a cup of coffee before the the event and there was like four tables of Vietnam vets around us and it was just wow. really, really fun. It was really cool to see. Um so that was that was pretty cool. Like you were kind of in like you you were just like part of a community. Yeah. Which was like, no, the Vietnam veterans came out full forest and um they love this kind of stuff. I know mm -hmm. dealing with them because um, it wasn't talked about for so long. Yeah. In the Vietnam, I mean, even they disagree over Vietnam more. I mean, I literally mm -hmm. have had two veterans almost basically mm -hmm. getting a verbal fight amongst with like three, like 90 kids watching um, over their opinion on how the war played out. So, um, you know, pretty much everybody involved, there's so many different sides, so much disagreement. And it's still mm -hmm. rough very fresh in American history. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about. Like, is this, you know, it's probably going to be received a little bit differently than the Civil War documentary was, um, just because it's it's such recent history and recent memory for people. Um, 
you know, I don't know how many Canadians are going to watch it. Like, I mean, we get PBS up here, obviously, but like I said, I'm very much looking forward to watching it and finally learning about it. And I did think of just one more question while you guys were talking, but do you think this is something that you'll be able to use as a teaching tool, like as teachers that. Oh, for sure. It's, yeah. I mean, Nick's still in the classroom. I'm not yeah. like it's, it is challenging to use Ken Burns as a teaching tool because he's doesn't, you know, he takes his time. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really, yeah. really, you know, like I used um, elements of the the cause, the first episode of the Civil mm -hmm. War, and then I would use elements of the last episode. Yeah. Because you know, he does a really nice job, like connecting lines and, and you know, tying knots, mm -hmm. however you want to phrase it, um, to kind of see. You know, you can you can almost with young people, I think, kind of skip a lot of the middle to kind of see how yeah it plays out um it is good to, to show like individual perspectives um i pulled out a lot of some stuff here and there from the war um because i think he did a lot with um he brought in a lot more multiple perspectives about race and things like that which i thought was was good um so yeah definitely can use them in the classroom but it's hard because like i remember i distinctly remember having a teacher and it was like the coolest thing for me like we watched hours of the civil war when i was in eighth grade mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, like, wow, this is like the greatest thing ever. And I'm sure, yeah. sure two thirds of the class was like, nah. Because <laughs> uh, I remember when I went to the classroom, like, how did he get away with that? That was like two weeks of class. Yeah. He was just <laughs> in the back of the room. Well, I just did the math. I, I'm going to use the U.S. history. That's 23 days. So, less than <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. I'll definitely use it in a vet project. We'll probably, because each Friday at the beginning of the year, we try to watch docs. So I'll probably definitely watch the first episode with them. And then if they really get into it, we'll probably watch a couple others too. So it's just, uh, I think it, I'll definitely use it in a classroom. We'll dissect the hell out of it, um, you know, and find all his mistakes. <laughs> so Ken, <laughs> listening, you know, I can, uh, me, me and some high school kids <laughs> will tell you stupid stuff. Actually, we probably won't be any mistakes. Yeah. But we'll this, break down what's good, what makes it good. Typically, yeah. Well, that's, it sounds like it's really cool. Um, that's all the questions I have for you guys about that. So we can probably get into talking about Ken Burns' Civil War documentary now. Yeah, we're still an Abraham Lincoln podcast. Yes. We're going to talk about the Civil War. Uh, the Civil, like, it's weird. The title is The Civil War. So that's yeah. what we're going to call it. So, yeah, we kind of talked as as the, the three of us were kind of sharing some some group chats about how to kind of talk about it. So we just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about our experience with it, how, how we remember it. Um, and then maybe some of our favorite parts, uh, time allowing. So, so Mary, why don't you go ahead and start us off since you're kind of, kind of running this show today. Okay. Well, um, so it was 1990 when it came out, I was all of eight years old and I don't remember much about the first time I watched it, but I know I did watch it because my parents would just, they would find out about anything civil war, Abraham Lincoln that was on. And I'm sure I was the only eight year old in, you know, in, well, not in, I'm sure there's other eight year olds in Canada watching it, but you know, I was the geeky kid that was at home watching Ken Burns Civil War doc documentary. I was transfixed by it. Like just, I watched every single episode when it was on and then I rewatched it. It was a long time before I rewatched it again, but every single time it just, I always learned something new. Um, the music just, not only does it haunt me, but it is a regular soundtrack that I listen to on a regular basis. And just the stories and the photos in it, um, the narrative, it's all just, it's an amazing. Like, it's such a wonderful series, and I have such great memories of watching it, even though it's such a sad, it's, parts of it are very sad. Like, I will start crying when the Sullivan Blue letter is read. Um, I'll start crying when a show farewell starts playing. Like, so it's a very emotional series for me too. So, what are your thoughts, guys, on it? Oh, I did not watch it till much later in my life. I'm talking like I'm 80 years old. I feel like uh, <laughs> probably within the last 10 years for sure. Probably less than that. I finally watched it. I have a very big problem when like stuff gets popular, or I know it is, and then I'm like. You know what? I, I don't know. I'm not going to go. And Breaking Bad, I don't know. You know, <laughs> is it really that good? Which it is. Just for yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> it's a war. So um, I was definitely a latecomer to it. 
Um, but yeah, it's awesome. I mean, to me, I just love uh, how he just tells the whole story. I mean, that's his gift. Obviously, the Ken Burns effect, too. I mean, mm. Zooming in. Yes, yeah. But I mean, hell, he's got his own effect named after him in uh, an iMovie. And yeah. Um, but just how he tells the story and, you know, how he just goes from episode to episode. Um, just weave stuff in. It's just he's a master at it. I think we mm-hmm. talked about that. He kind of created this genre, um, and he's done it for Civil War, World War II, and I'm sure he's going to get it done for Vietnam, covering all aspects. And the huge task got to be mind-boggling, overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah, I kind of came onto it late. Love it. Um, I've watched it several times now. So watched a little bit of it before I came here tonight. True that. All right. Yeah, I was watching some movie clips earlier today of it too. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm probably more similar to Mary than I am to Nick. Um, I distinctly remember watching it. Um, I was about ten, so pretty much you know very close to the same age. Um, and watching it what, when it was airing on PBS, um, I very you know I remember it being on. I remember watching. I remember being interested in it. Um, but I also remember like, I have this like very clear, vivid memory of in the basement in the house where I grew up, there was like a TV and underneath it, we had like the VHS, like case, you know, the whole, whole, and, like, mm-hmm. like I very distinctly remember yeah. there's like, four VHS tapes with masking tape on the top. And it says civil war episodes, like five, six, seven. And I thought movie, you were going to yeah. say it was something else, but <laughs> no, no, that was, was last episode. No. <laughs> We're talking about Ken Burns, um, but Not I barely, like, very clearly can like I can I can still picture it in my mind's eye, like in my mom's handwriting, the VHS tapes would be like taped off TV, which I would like. It'd be cool. I don't even I, I don't know what I would even play it on now, but um, uh, v- VHS player, or VHS, player. <laughs> VCR, vinyl is back. Is VCR. I don't know if VHS v- is back. I have no VHS. Been. I don't. I don't think VHS is back. But no. it's funny you mentioned the tapes because I'm pretty sure my father taped all the episodes for me too, and I'm sure my mother has them saved somewhere right. in the house. Yeah, yeah. it's and, and I would pop them in every now and then, and uh, and I don't feel like I ever left it. Like I remember my brother when mm-hmm. he was in grade, uh, he wrote a research paper on George McClellan, and like like I re- I distinctly remember him watching many parts of that documentary. Your brother wrote a paper in eighth grade. <laughs> McClellan. It was like, you know, the typical eighth grade research paper that's like a five to seven page paper. You have to have a thesis. And his was like, uh, no joke, like 32 pages. Like, <laughs> if you know your brother. That wow. Way. Brother is, uh, is he listening? Yeah. Shout I don't out. know if he's a listener or not. <laughs> I hope he is. If he is, shout, shout out my brother, Dr. Hey, Dr. Hey. Justin. Hey, uh, hey, Doc. What's up? Uh, my brother teaches in uh, at a school in California, but um it's Caltech. I'll be honest. It's not a school in California. It's not the school in California. Anyway, um, so I, I like I distinctly remember him taking notes on the documentary and citing it in, in this paper that he wrote about whether or not McClellan was a traitor. Um, and it was that and Shelby Foote's um, series, um, which was like sexy big, Shelby Foote. Yeah. By the way, which is I could listen to him read the phone book. Oh, I, yeah, I could, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then He's I remember, amazing. like, uh, when the DVDs came out, I like it was my. I think I got them for one. I think it was my twenty second birthday, in like two thousand. What two thousand one? Uh, the DVDs came out, and I remember like I got them for my birthday because they came out like a you know right around my birthday. Why weren't and, you like, getting drunk? I <laughs> dude, this is not a joke. Like I had graduated college, but <laughs> but my girlfriend at the time was still in college. And I got them. My parents got them for me. Is this the infamous girlfriend? From yeah, we're not going to get into that. We're not getting into that. Um, so I, I just say, like, we went out, you know, whatever, like, college kids do. And I, I like, we got back and I, and I just remember putting the DVD in, like, coming back from the bar at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, not in any shape to be doing anything. I'm like, oh, you guys got to watch this. This is so amazing. <laughs> like, you have to watch this. This is the coolest thing ever. Like, you don't know what I'm talking about? Like, Didn't you watch people, you know? Uh, and, like, and I watched, you know, was it you it and, and and your gal pal at this time? No, she had no interest in that one. Okay. Was, yeah, like, yeah, I was figuring no. that, that probably ruined your chances for the night. Oh, well, <laughs> God, no. Yeah. My mom's a listener, just to let you know. <laughs> and I did. I watched DVDs, like, drunk, coming over from the bar. I was 22. It was legal. Yeah, no, we've all well done that. 
So I think I'll try to, if I can find it, I'll, I'm not going to look too long, but if I could dig up that photo, like there's a photo of me, like on my parents' couch, like holding my civil war DVD set that I got for my birthday. Uh, so I stopped the Gaston one too with it. Dude, why are you keep bringing up like embarrassing stuff from when I was a kid? I'm trying to tell you like through all that thread of embarrassing stories as a kid, the one constant, there were many constants, but the one, one of the constants, Ken Burns Civil War. Mm -hmm. Yep. Same for me too. Yeah, it's so, like I said, it was too cool for me. I was too hipster. Like, you're the only person I know that could say a, a PBS documentary was too cool. For yeah, it's me. too I'm cool so for me. The fringe that like not even a, uh, I don't know what that one is. Probably 15, 20 hours, whatever. Yeah, was, I was like, I ain't touching this. This has got too much popularity tied into so. it. <laughs> and one other real small thing, and not to like <laughs> humble brag about who I've seen speak, but. Um, I was visiting my brother when he, I think he had just started at Caltech or he hadn't been there too long doing his doctoral work. Um, he's like, Hey, there's a, there's a speaker series. Um, and in the same week, they had two speakers at Caltech. I think it was the same week. It was either that or like the same spring. And I went out there twice, but, um, but one of them was David McCullough. Uh, so Whoa. I saw him speak. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. It was, uh, he was doing his book tour for 1776. I just bought that book this weekend when I was oh, away. Yeah. I had a signed copy from. Oh. Uh, so that would have been in 2003 or 2000 or the spring of 2004. Um, but I saw him speak. So, of course, you know, as soon as he starts talking, you're like, oh, man, that voice. <laughs> yep. The narrator of the Civil War series. Uh, but he's talking about the, his you know, new book, uh, 1776. Um, so I was able to talk to him. And at the time, I was just starting as a history teacher. So, um, you know, he was kind of you know there's a big long line of people getting books signed but he took took a couple seconds to shake my hand and he signed my German book in 1776 he's like yeah 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 okay keep the line moving buddy keep it moving no nope. I was like can you what are you signing the book what are you putting the book <laughs> uh he wrote two words with mouse towards then uh, that would be one two words, <laughs> That's two words more than two. Were David and McCullough oh, wow. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> that makes sense. personalization was for the for the high rollers. I got Mick Foley's autograph. Okay. Do you know who the other person I saw speak? Wrestling. Since I'm name dropping now, the other person I saw speak at Caltech sure. in 2003? No. Bernie Sanders. No shit. Wow. Awesome. Who yeah. the hell's, who's that? No, I'm just yeah, joking. Bernie. He was a, just, a, just, just a lowly representative at the time. He lives in Canada, right? Is that, is that a... Is I that wish. A kind of I don't know. Social <laughs> Yeah, so, I was thinking healthcare. I was going that route. Sorry, yeah. I felt like I kind of hogged the time talking. No, about no worries. Um, so, what is your favorite episode, Nick, of the Civil War? Mine is simply murder. Okay. Because I like that. No, um, that has Fredericksburg. I really like Fredericksburg, and I like how they told that story. Um, in there, I, I kind of listening to Shelby Foot, you know, um. A lot of the time, I think the Southern troops, you know, are always kind of reflected on as being these tough, you know, um, weathered, um, you know, just went in there kind of that they were better than the Northern troops. But he made a very big point saying, you know, there was no troop braver than those troops at Fredericksburg who were making that charge up that hill, mm -hmm. you know, when they knew it was a lost cause. So and I just like how he kind of put all that together. I really like hearing about like combat aspect stuff of that you know kind of what people were feeling um and how it played out and, and that's probably a reflection on some of the work i do at school talking to vets so that's kind of why i like that episode they do a nice job kind of going through some of those battles there in the middle that kind of get lost to history um but played a significant role obviously for those who were there yeah i uh that's not my favorite episode uh but i i agree that that is a, a very very strong element of the of the work, especially the Fredericksburg piece. Um, Cause I distinctly remember and like there's certain parts of the, of the whole series that I can like see in my head and hear. Um, but when Shelby Foote specifically talks about how the Southern troops felt that they were just, you know, that, that it was kind of like very, and I think there's similar elements to how um, people viewed Americans in world war II. Um, and even in the Vietnam War, the you know they're draftees, uh, they're children of privilege. They're not; they don't have this tenacity that um, that the other side has. And then they, that's been proven not to be the case. And Fredericksburg is a great example. And Shelby Foote just says it explicitly. You know, I think he says something along the lines that they found out that was not true, not by a long shot. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then aside from Burnside, just like sadistically sending wave after wave. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a great, great choice, Nick. Thank my, you. My Thank you. <laughs> what, what, what is, uh, yours? Um, I still am Mary's job. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. There are two things that I like uh, quite a lot. I, I think the narration in the beginning uh, of the cause, the first episode, mm -hmm. um, is just so beautifully written and spoken by David McCullough. And that's why I'm interested to see how the Vietnam War, um, because Jeffrey Ward did a lot of the writing, I believe, for Civil War and for baseball, Ken Burns' two earlier works he did the vietnam um, writing too didn't he uh yeah, i thought I'm he said that maybe, maybe he did i don't know. but his writing i think it works so well with um with telling telling the story for a documentary um so i think that the the cause um and him talking like how they bring slavery to the forefront um uh, and then they bring in the former slave or i think maybe yeah, the the woman who's like very very old by the time they filmed her, I believe she mm -hmm. Daisy herself. Turner. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, when she's when she still talks about how she'd rather die than be a slave, and you're nothing but a dog, and like those 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 lines still stay with me, and it's been years and years since I've seen it, and like singing um, Jacob's Ladder, uh, just so powerful, just that first hour or so. Yeah. Um, and then of course everybody likes was it George Beers. The guy's like John Brown, John Brown. Oh yeah. Ed Beers. I guess Ed Beers. Ed, Ed Beers. Yep. <laughs> anyway, that guy. That's more just kind of funny to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really like the cause. I think that that's like the most powerful part of it. And to me, the part that's the most informative um, is episode seven, "Most Hallowed Ground." Mm -hmm. That I think is a very often overlooked period in the Civil War, where it's really it really becomes that war of attrition. Yeah. The casualties are so high and we kind of lose the gallantry of Antietam and, um, you know, first and second bull runner Manassas and uh, Gettysburg. It just, it doesn't have that, that feeling. I think it, it's kind of been lost to history when there's battles that are as big or bigger than some of those major battles early in the war. Um, but they're, you know, it's just so, so, gruesome and the casualties are so high and mm -hmm. um the resolve and i think lincoln has a lot to do with this the resolve of the nation to to make it through that is really so incredible and i think that that to me as a learner of the civil war and using the documentary to help me learn it was really important to kind of see that yep. like, wow, like like battle after battle after battle with all these thousands and thousands of casualties and it's kind of lost it doesn't have that second day of shiloh it doesn't have that um you know, Pickett's Charge or the the bridge at Antietam or, you know, Bloody Lane or like there's not, yeah. there's, they don't have that same um, reverence or what, however you want to say it in the way that we look at that history, but it's so important and it's so important to know about. And I think that obviously so many lives were lost. It's important to kind of uh, respect that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and for to dedicate basically a whole, episode to really yeah. those battles and, and really and that's one thing ken burns does very well like he doesn't you know he doesn't always give the people what they want you know like the people want like i want two hours on gettysburg or I yeah want, exactly you know, yeah it's or, or like any you know and like i think a lot of people are like i want to know about the army of the potomac and the army of northern virginia yeah and anything else whatever it's background knowledge like no like there's important battles in the west and we're going to talk about the battles in the west and there's naval battles and there's battles yeah. in Alabama and wherever else. Like, whereas like, we're just kind of conditioned to really care about, I want Lee and Grant. And that, you know, that's what I want to yeah. learn, you know, when he's like, Nope, there's a lot more to it than that. So, um, and I think that that's going to be a big, big element to the Vietnam mm -hmm. war, where it's not going to be, you know, I want to see, I want to see protests or I want to see tat or I want to see like, the major things that, that, that a lot of people know about, it's going to be like, no, this is war from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, ugly, and everything. I agree. Yeah. Mary, what do you yeah. love about it? Um, okay, well, I don't think any of our listeners who follow me on Twitter will be surprised by my favorite episode, All War is Hell. Mm -hmm. 
which opens with Sherman's March to the Sea. And that's because that's that was such a, you know, again, it's going back to the war of attrition. Um, and just that they knew that the Civil War had to end. And Sherman is just going to, like, cut this swath clear through Georgia. And to me, that was a very powerful episode. Um, it's actually, I have two favorite episodes. The other is the universe of battle, which is, you know, it is about Gettysburg, which Gettysburg is a very special place for me, but it, that episode also has my absolute favorite moment, um, from the entire Ken Burns series in it. And that's, um, Lincoln's recitation, like Sam Watterson reciting the Gettysburg address. And that is to me, one of the most moving moments in that whole series. I agree. Right. Obviously, as a, as Lincoln enthusiast, I th you know I would agree. But I think that um, there's a lot of what Ken Burns is good at in that moment. Yes. Like in episode one, he said, you know, says something along. He, the narrator, David McCullough, says something along the lines of, you know, when they're describing Lincoln, they all they he mentions the Gettysburg Address right away when they introduce yep. him as, a, as a figure in the documentary, and he says like, and Abraham Lincoln says perhaps more than even he knew. You know whatever mm -hmm. you know and talking about the 240 words and the 243 or whatever it is um and I, I one of the things i like about that episode too is it is all about you know there's a big chunk in gettysburg as there should yep. be but he does a great job making sure that everybody knows vicksburg fell in the same Ex way. yes yeah and, and that's like, why i loved it too <laughs> that's like something like like people don't really realize one the significance of vicksburg which yeah. arguably could have it's you know, whatever, potato, potato, but uh, it could be argued that that's as, as significant or more significant than Gettysburg to the entire war uh, yeah. because of its location and strategic location. Well, but I the think the fact that they fell on the same day is like logically, yeah. I mean, from a military logistics standpoint, it is more important. Yeah. Gettysburg more of a psychological mm -hmm. loss, I feel. Especially yeah. with, with the date. Like yeah. everybody finds out about yeah. it July 4th. You know, which is three days after Canada Day. So, yes, exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> no. well, Canadian listeners. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think yeah, yeah. the thing I liked about the Universe of Battle too was it mentioned Vic Vicksburg, and to me, that was the more decisive from a military standpoint victory because soon after that victory, Lincoln wrote, "The Father of Waters flows on Vex to the sea." Like they have the entire Mississippi River. You know, and I think Gettysburg was good from a moralistic standpoint and geographically too. I mean, the closer the battles were to Washington, the more they're going to get covered as well at the time, just because of the way communications were. But um, yeah, the universe of battles tie for first place um, with all war as hell for my favorite episode of yeah. the documentary. And I, yeah, I agree. And it's hard to, you know, it's it's just like a Ken Burns game, like it's twelve or whatever. We all play yeah. Love. So like, you know, and it's not. I never got to feel, you know, when I'm watching, I never get the feeling like, you know, this is an episode. I because I, mean, I I just try to watch as much as I can. Yep. Until until the next day when I you know when I'm trying to get through it and every but I do every now and then go back and watch a couple of battle or two. Um, so, so if you're uh, listening, you never watch it. You don't need to watch episode two, three, or uh, six. I think that's like the only ones we didn't mention. So. No, I would, Skip those. Uh, watch the whole thing. It's wonderful. It is. Forever Free. Yeah. Is, um, I believe the only episode that's pulling directly from a Lincoln. No, episode nine. Uh, episode three is Forever Free, taken directly out of the Emancipation Proclamation. Mm -hmm. And then episode nine, uh, The Better Angels of Our Nature. Yeah. Is taken weirdly, it's the 1865 episode, but the Battle yeah. of the Angel of our, uh, Angels of Our Nature is not from the second inaugural. Yeah, uh, but uh, interestingly, a good title. I mean, we're just looking at Netflix here, just in case we need to pull something <laughs> up. But um, it's interesting when in the in the in the eighth, eighth episode, War is All Hell, the Johnny Netflix describes it William Tecumseh Sherman's March to the Sea brings the war to the heart of Georgia and the Carolinas. and spells the end of the confederacy <laughs> since it's netflix uh summation or whatever definitely gives your gives your guy a lot of credit yeah yeah <laughs> maybe yeah. that's uh that's that's well done it's like he did it all on his own <laughs> like no 
He wouldn't have been there without Grant, just saying. Exactly. He wouldn't have. Grant's the best. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you're wondering about this, perhaps you could listen to a back episode of The Rail Splitter where we talk about Grant and Sherman, which was the debut of <laughs> Rail Splitter Mary, I will point out. Oh. <laughs> so um, I think we do need to spend a little bit of time. We, we mentioned it a little bit, but like there's there are figures in the Civil War. Shelby Foote um, is the first one that comes to mind. Yeah. Just, just brilliant. Um, and I think that one thing that I think people don't really understand about Ken Burns is he was, um, you know, to get the funding necessary to create the Civil War, you know, in you know, over five years or so in the 90, in the 80s and having a debut in the 90s, like he was a big deal in documentary filmmaking. He was nominated for two Oscars uh, for <laughs> short pieces on... That was a funny uh, moment for the yeah. night. The guy actually goes, Oscar, what was it? Is it Oscar winning? Well, oh, Oscar oh, winning. Oh, oh, like, nominate, I'm not nominated. He I think he, that was uh, some passive aggressive shade he was throwing. Something like that. Um, but uh, so, you know, he's, he had uh, he did a piece on the Statue of Liberty and the Brooklyn Bridge on Congress. Um, so like all, a lot of those American experience uh, PBS documentaries are really, really brilliant. Um, but he was a big deal. And, you know, he had already kind of established his uh, unique style. Um, and then got got a lot of funding, obviously, from through PBS and some different funders to create this Civil War documentary. And then it just took off. Um, but he has, you know, the, the Sam Watterson is a great example who had played mm-hmm. Lincoln on television. Um, and I thought did a, did a really good job. Yeah. Obviously, we're clouded now because we saw the greatest performance of all time. Yes. <laughs> uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> but, no, he's um, good. Uh, I thought that was well done. It wasn't like this booming, loud, dominant voice. It was, you know, mm-hmm. true to the character. Um, Morgan Freeman as Frederick Douglass. Yep. Jason Can't Robards as Mrs. Grant. Grant. Um, yeah, there's, and there's like Kurt Vonnegut was in there, did some mm-hmm. small parts. Love Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, Jeremy Irons as well. He mm-hmm. did some parts. Um, I think it was, yeah, I, I, I can't remember, I think Arthur Miller. Yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Arthur Miller, who's like a legend, you know, like, you know, legendary playwright. Yeah. Who, uh, you know, people like that had to do it just because they, they believed in it. You know, there's why else Arthur Miller would um, decide to do that. But yeah, it's, you know, there's quite a lot of people. And I'm not sure some of the other names, like the, the um, actor that played Mary Chestnut was just, Oh, her, she her was perfect. You know, her. You know. I love listening to her because you could hear just the annoyance in her voice at some points as she's reading the entries from the diary, and it's like that's probably how Mary Chestnut was feeling as she wrote those entries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mary Chestnut. <laughs> I mean, a couple of thoughts on her. But <laughs> keep them myself. No, I thought yeah. So, um, and it's definitely something to to revisit and, and take a look at. So. Um, not anytime soon, but way down the road, I'm sure we will revisit this and yep. maybe look at an episode or two and, you know, kind of on their own and, and try to break it down a little bit. But, uh, we definitely wanted to talk about Ken Burns just because Sunday is going to be the release of, uh, the Vietnam war. And, and we, one of the clips we did see, uh, when we saw him in Chicago last week was the first clip. And I don't want to spoil it for you because it's, it is very unique to ken not, not unique to ken burns but like you'll you'll never have seen anything like the beginning in any other ken burns work um when you watch the first five minutes i feel he made a very very bold documentary filmmaking choice uh that if you had told me what it was i would have been like that sounds really stupid but it is a really really powerful and interesting and intriguing way to start the story and I'll be interested to hear what people think of it. Um, but yeah, we got to see the first five minutes and it was really, really cool how they how they started. So I'll be interested to hear what people think. What did you think of that? Was it, I don't want to spoil it because I think it's, it's worth kind of experiencing. I agree. Do you even know what I'm talking about? No, I do know what you're okay. talking about. <laughs> Nick fell asleep apparently. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. Wrong. Uh yeah, I, I don't know what else I could say without giving it away. It's it's well done. So it's creative. It's well done. Um, the placement of stuff. I also like it a great deal. It just works. All the components together. 
Yeah, if you're it'd expect- be something, it'd be maybe we talk about it next episode actually yeah. at the beginning, but it's mm-hmm. really well done. Put it this way: if you're expecting like a slow pan shot over some combat photos from Vietnam to start the documentary, well, you're, you're going to be disappointed because it is a very unique way of starting the work, and I think it does. I think it's going to set the stage for this is not a typical. This is not going to be a typical viewing experience. You're you're going to get immersed in. I was wondering how much footage he's going to use, having the availability of so much more footage. Um, and he still does use his pictures. The intro, though, is not mm-hmm. stuff like it's, it's not the Ken Burns effect. Let's just put it there. Wow. Oh. Trademarked Ken Burns effect. It was oh. a little of uh, Nick Stangy. I know I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Nick Tangy effect. Uh, it, in we'll uh, we'll talk a lot more about Ken Burns, you know, when we get the chance. Um, yeah, I, you can if you're listening, man. You know, just, just drop us a line yeah, on Twitter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. tag Ken Burns on Twitter, and maybe he'll even respond. Yeah, yeah. and then I think we know one of your relatives too, uh, Chris Burns. That's so. right, one of our loyal <laughs> listeners, friend of the show, Chris Burns. We've been giving him a hard time all week. Like, hey, we're going to see your <laughs> uncle, man. You think he could get? They're <laughs> like way up here, our noses are bleeding. So, uh, so Chris Burns, you're listening. You know, maybe maybe you reach out to us. Reach out to Uncle Ken. See if you can get him on the show. So, I, I hear Chris Burns loves my shout outs to the people that will never contact us. <laughs> there you go. And Let's we're going to prove him wrong. When, uh, he's that good when, not when, when Ken Burns retweets us. Uh, so, uh, we end each show every week with the This Week in Lincoln. Uh, we had one of the best ideas we've ever had. And I say we when it was totally Nick. Uh, Nick is going to supply our weekly feature this week. What do we got, Nick? Well, <laughs> we went to see Ken Burns, and I'm just like, there's got to be something with Ken Burns and pop culture out there. So, you know, I, I got on the Google machine and just started Googling the shit out of Ken Burns. <laughs> and, and, uh, I, I came across this little ditty on uh, funnierdie.com. It's basically, it, it reminds me a lot of like the Saturday Night Live raps, you know, uh, the God, what's the Chronicles of Narnia? Uh, the the Chronic what? Oh, yeah, um, it reminded me a lot of those guys. Something Island. Uh, uh, Lonely uh, Island Boys yes. is the name Lonely of the group. Island, yeah. So it reminded me of that. It's it's pretty funny. We'll put the link out there to it. Um, it's definitely much watched. Oh, I don't know if you let's play. just play it. You oh, just want right. to play it? All right. Yeah, just play it. It's two minutes and 52 seconds. Yeah. We can do it. Just right. play it. This week in... Well, we got to give credit to the person who put this together. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, it's Scooch Comedy, Ken Burns, okay, uh, from Funny or Die. So this week in Ken Burns, I give you the Ken Burns rap. Hello? Hey, dude. You want to see a movie? Is it going to be educational? It's on PBS. You tell me. <laughs> the Ken Burns effect actually was born to move and pan through photographs. Style's good. Style is the authentic application of all the techniques that we have. We've got to do a real big list time. Let's do it. Let's go. The Ken Burns. The Ken Burns. Ken Burns. Ken Burns. Ken Burns. He's a ring. Ken Burns. And a thing. Ken Burns. You respect. Ken Burns. Break your neck. Yeah. Cultural. Yeah, we up in the spot. Bitches on both my arms, both cups. Ken Burns a legend, better recognize a hero. Sex of classic movies like Robert De Niro. Documentaries focus on Americana. Can't be make his own style. Don't show you ain't gonna Bringing history to life while we zooming in on pictures. Bitch, check the zeitgeist. Generation fixture. National treasure. Like the Grand Canyon. Belong on Mount Rushmore. President companion. DVR, PBS, so you could see what we Ken Burns is a great American storyteller. His influence in our culture is unmet. Boss of the doc game, Spurlock like an intern. You stuck in the hospital with third degree. Ken Burns, Mark Twain, Prohibition, Jazz, and the Civil War. Trump in the club, snap to him, finish in the club. The political spin on the disc. Ain't no white for what? 
got a film assembly line. You can call him every foot, taking no pictures. Man, fascinated. He can make a show like Captain Bay. Check a fixing eye movement, man. Campers ain't a trope. He already won the race, so you sit back and try to go. Then the angle subject the can ain't burn. Master of his craft, see what you can learn. Get burned. Hi, I'm Luke Motis. And I prefer not to reveal my identity. And we're Scooch Comedy. Thank you for watching, and thanks to Funny or Die for featuring our video. If you want to see more of our... Okay, so... <laughs> that was awesome. ...went on YouTube, so... Uh, nothing like third degree Ken Burns. Uh, and we'll put a link out there. The video is worth watching. It is. Yeah, the, so. it's, it's pretty amazing. So uh, thank you, Nick, for this week in Ken Burns. Uh, do we have any parting thoughts, Mary or Nick? Okay. Next episode, 16. Yes, next Ooh. episode is 16. We are working very hard at trying to honor some of your suggestions. Um, some of the suggestions rely on us bringing in other people which is not always easy to do we try the best we can so we're working on trying to book a guest for the 16th episode but if you have any other ideas for the big 16th episode and, and other than Nick giving away three Lincolns famous, and a Washington <laughs> I think you're giving away uh three Jeffersons and a Lincoln so it'll be 16 16 we're giving away uh Sixteen dollars and sixteen cents. Maybe I can give away sixteen Canadian dollars. Oh. And I don't know what the exchange <laughs> rate is. Who's on the the? I don't even know what, what is it called. Uh, the the ten dollar bill. There's um, we have one for our one fiftieth, um, which has four different Canadians on it, and then the five dollar bill I believe has Prime Minister Wilfrid Laurier on it, and the one dollar coin has a loon on it. Oh, nice. Yes. Ah, some loons. Yeah. So I could just give away like 16 loonies. That's oh, what we call them. That would be amazing. <laughs> $16. Canadian yeah. $16. I, I got so excited when I heard that. All right. So <laughs> thank you for letting me host tonight, too. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. No, you did a great awesome. job. Thank that was you. fun. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Mary, Nick. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. I encourage hey. everybody. We're I'm definitely going to be watching on Sunday the Vietnam War and kind of having a little bit of nostalgia for the Civil War. You know what everybody should do? If there's a commercial break, which I don't know if there will be, but if there is, you should uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Drop us a review, which we have. You can oh, yeah, that yeah, out. yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Uh, I, we have a review to read, and this review was so, so – meaningful because i feel like essentially this review just described what we were hoping to accomplish with the show um so and it actually this review has a funny story too which is uh pretty cool so my phone is being slow we are up to seven reviews it'd be awesome to have 16 reviews for episode 16. yes so, so you know get out there like if you're chris burns drop us a review man yes no kidding <laughs> Um, so my phone is acting up. I'm, I'm going to read this review. Interesting story behind the review is, um, yeah, I, I got it. I, it's, it's up now. Um, for some reason the review came in and gave the reviewer a name on its own. So, uh, he was kind enough to go onto our Facebook group and kind of correct it. So he, uh, titled the review spirit of Lincoln. And the review reads like, the, like this. As a Lincoln devotee, I was pleased to find this podcast. Imagine having a couple friends over for drinks, snacks, and to discuss all things Lincoln. That's this podcast. The episode about Spielberg's Lincoln was the perfect example. This was the kind of talk you'd have among friends who share your interest in number 16. Not as pretentious as TED Talks, not as polished as some of the network-produced pods, and that's why I like it. This is a podcast in the spirit of Lincoln. Uh, very, very kind review, um, and I thank you. And I also thank um, thank you for joining the Facebook group, which I would encourage everybody to do. Uh, just look up the Rail Splitter on Facebook. Uh, that review is by uh, a gentleman named John. So, John, we appreciate that. Aww. And for some reason, iTunes put in John's name as Glass Half Full Mom. <laughs> so, John, I'm, I'm sure you're an optimistic person, uh, which is why you're Glass Half Full. 
Um, I'm not sure if you're a parent or not, but uh, anyway, perfect review. That's exact, literally exactly what we were trying to do. That's awesome. So that was a great review. We really appreciate that. Uh, we will review, read your reviews online, whether they're one star or five, and uh, we hope to have 16 reviews, which is over double what we have now. Uh, but we'd really like to have 16 reviews uh, by our 16th episode. That'd be really, really great. Uh, also, tweet at us at RailsplitterPod, just like Matt did with the handle at MTC5150. Love the podcast. My wife is from Fillmore, Utah. Named after our second favorite president, originally the capital of Utah. Wow. And I did not know there was a Fillmore, Utah, but wow. I am all for petitioning and getting that change to Lincoln, Utah. Um, but I am sure Matt's uh, wife is a lovely lady um, from Fillmore, Utah. So if she's in favor of changing it to Lincoln, I am right there with her. We will sign the petition. And thank you for tweeting at us. That was definitely a fun tweet. Everybody that tweets at us, we really like that. I've been crazy busy at work, so I haven't been as active on social media as I'd like. We're going to try to kind of ramp that up as much as we can. Well, the good thing with Twitter is you could just like tweet in the middle of a meeting. I've been to some meetings. They're, they're kind of boring at times, especially if that – oh, I won't name names. But. Abraham Lincoln would not have tweeted in the middle of a cabinet meeting. Oh, he would have. He told yeah, me. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. You're probably right. He would have, no, he would have used um, like – I don't know, one of the ones where you can schedule tweets and they would have been going out during the cabinet meetings. Oh, yeah, that's actually yeah. not a good idea. That's what I do. I usually schedule some if I'm working or whatever. And... That's a good idea. And that way I can just say, like, they're like hey, we know, we saw the time set on that tweet. Like, oh, no, I scheduled it. It's okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, they won't even know, will they? No. <laughs> so uh, I think we're good. I think we had a really good uh, lengthy conversation. Okay. About, uh, a week before the Battle members. of Bull Run. Uh, Sullivan so Bull anyway, if you are Major listening, we hope you tune in next Island week. And we thank you for listening. Wrote Tweet at us at RailSplitterPod on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and you can email us at derailsplitterpodcast at gmail.com. And we will Chris see Burns, you. don't forget to uh, <laughs> your review. ratings and reviews on iTunes. And keep walking the world with malice toward none and with charity for all. And we will see you next week. <laughs> All right. Let me bring this back. Good show. That was awesome. <laughs>